PATH is the Center for Adapting Flaws into Features. It's a, a multi-university effort to think about science in a different way, to think about how different features that we perceive as flaws can be turned around into something that's useful to the world. And then through that same lens, want to think about the people, the human resources that are also a part of this to, to show people that science really does need everybody. There's not a single gender or a single class or a single race that is successful in science. Science needs everybody. So the Center for Adapting Flaws into Features was created in order to take advantage of a unique place where we are in terms of our capabilities with both experiment and theory. We've known for a long time that these defects at interfaces uh, can have an outsized impact on either positive or negative outcomes for materials properties and also health outcomes. But what's potentially transformative right now with our center is that we have combined a set of experts to take advantage of the latest, uh, most advanced experimental capabilities that we can image precisely the chemistry that's happening and in interfaces that leads to outcomes, as well as computational expertise to use the best supercomputers to be able to understand exactly which structures and conformations um, amidst the thousands and potentially millions of different conformations can link a particular chemistry to, to an outcome. The goal of our center is to look at uh, molecules as they grow in size and complexity, it becomes essentially impossible to synthesize them. So they have every single one of them is an exact copy of all the others. So you have to deal with what classically people like to call defects and, and uh, we like to call them flaws. And uh, the goal of the center really is to take these molecules that are large and that can be full of these flaws and basically do a full virtuous cycle of synthesis to make them, of characterization by a large number of different techniques, and then uh, finally of theoretical characterization and theoretical analysis, including things like machine learning that then can feed right back into the synthesis uh, to actually make improved uh, versions of these molecules that have you know, distinct properties. I believe that our team is distinctive in that what we have done is to assemble a group of people who are not only incredibly well established and and creative scientists in their own right, but as a group of people that we gather together who all really enjoy collaborating. Our center believes that knowledge should be for everyone and at an affordable cost. Hence, the main motto of this lab would be to have a very cost-effective spectrometer which is only $200 and with that they can learn the concept of spectroscopy, the concept of uh, programming and the concept of new age data science that they can apply in their near future. In our efforts to try and develop curricula for community college settings, one of our big focuses has been on spectroscopy and then also tying in other commonly used techniques in physical chemistry to spectroscopy. So we recently developed a lab that we implemented in collaboration with some of the local community colleges in central Illinois. This allowed us to tie in not only lessons about, you know, answering the specific questions that have to do with chemical mixtures, but then also how do you analyze data that isn't perfect and how do you extract meaningful information from data that has a combination of stuff we don't want, like noise, and information we do want, like the signal from our dyes. Collaboration is always nice in science research. Uh, it is always nice to learn from other people and share our experience in the uh, project and uh, collaborate to do something big. In our thesis, we use uh, silica gel column chromatography and the dialysis uh, to purify the carbon dot uh, and separate the carbon dot with uh, small molecules. We found that the, uh, the carbon dot that they thesis are just the small molecules that we can get. So carbon dots, they are innately heterogeneous materials that are produced in a variety of ways, including naturally in the environment. And we would like to be able to understand how their chemical properties on their surfaces relate to their uh, resulting optical properties. So the ability to image the electronic structure 
on these nanoparticles on one dot that's just a few nanometers in size, as well as to bring in the theory for all the different types of surface chemistry that could be happening on that nanodot that could give you those different properties on the same dot is what is so transformative about our center. We are bringing together uh, scientists, whether it be graduate students, undergrads, postdocs, and uh, PIs into one conversation. And so we are able to look to other people who may be on different levels of the academic ladder to be able to uh, look and see, okay, well, they have made these steps and they're now in this position and are able uh, to lead a lab. And these are the steps that they took and now as a graduate student, this is the next step I need to take. The next thing for CAF, I guess, appears on two levels. One is to work very hard to put together our proposal for phase two, but also accomplish quite a bit in phase one and demonstrated that we can understand certain flaws and we can identify flaws that are actually creating the most benefit, beneficial outcomes. So the next step in the short term is to now um, develop a way to replicate that flaw on purpose so we can take advantage of the beneficial effects of that flaw.